Hey, Pete, how you doing, man? God bless, man. Uh, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing, like, look, look. It is my honor just to talk to you, man. Like, I gotta give you one of these, man. Seriously. It's my honor to talk to you, Pete. How you feel today, man? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. All right, cool. Sunny California, so I can't argue. All right, no doubt. Well, it's kind of, you know what's so funny? It was warm in New York for like a couple of days, and now it's cold and it's raining. So I, I'm <laughs> jealous of you right now, man. I wish I was where you at right now, man. Seriously. Uh, you, should, you should be. It's always nice here. You kind of get sick of it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'll be out in uh, on L.A. Uh, June 7th. Actually, okay. I'm gonna be out there getting ready for E3. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be great, man. I can't wait. Word we'll up. Have you come, we'll have you come by the office then. Oh, oh, look, look. I'll I'll bring you. I'll bring y'all some food or something well, like that. I'll bring something like for real, man. I, I would love to come to the office. What? Oh, that'd be yeah. crazy, man. So, all right. So now we're about to get it started. First off, just to let y'all know, uh, this is my boy Pete Bush. You show him respect. This is this dude is a legend and he's smart as hell. All right. So. I just, before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. I have a very interesting interview, and I'm going to do my best to make sure every gamer, everybody in the world get a chance to really, like, see this and hear your knowledge, because I was talking about you earlier today to uh, some friends of mine, and I was like, yo, like, it never gets old to me, like, because I broke down a lot of barriers to be a journalist in this industry, man, and it's very hard, and, you know, just, like, especially, like, being a black journalist, like, there's a lot of things that I've dealt with that I shouldn't have had to deal with, but God is good, he brought me through it. But to be yeah. here talking to you makes every every hardship I've ever gone through in my life worthwhile. So I, God bless you, thank you so much for your time. We about to get it started, it's gonna be crazy. All right, so the first question that I have for you, man, and this right here, to me, I really feel, I, I really feel something that, that um, everybody is starting to gravitate to. But the deal that you did with uh, Binari, I'm sorry about that, but Bin not, uh, how do you say it, Binari Sinari? Hey, don't worry, we're working with them for months and I couldn't figure out. All right, cool, y'all trying to figure out this name, Binari Sinari, okay. Binari Sinari. Binari Sinari, okay. Yeah. Eric sent me the um, press release, he was like, yo, you gotta talk about this. I was like, oh, you! So the lip syncing and everything done at once, like all of the different languages, blew me away. Please let everybody know how that deal came about and how does this help the industry? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously every game that's being released now is being released in multiple languages. Okay. And traditionally, there's not a lot of money to do that. I mean, in comparison to what it takes to produce the English-speaking game. Okay. So, there's been a lot of workarounds, meaning you'll see subtitles, you'll see just the audio being replaced, but the mouth still moves in the English, you know, the English language, so it doesn't quite sync up. You know, so all the all the people that we're working with that are making the games are finding it, they're trying to figure out other ways to improve that quality. So what Binari Sonori is a company that basically records audio of voice actors for a lot of different games. Right. And he took a look at our technology, which basically uses video to drive and create animation. Right. And use it in a different way. So they take the video and they basically give it to the different people that are recording all the audio in the different languages. Right. And then they try to fit the you know, they try to fit the Spanish that they're speaking into the mouth of the English performer. Oh my Jesus. So it's, it seems like, you know, why would you do that? But what they're doing right now is they're trying to fit the audio of the Spanish to the audio of the English. You know, they'll listen to what the English is saying and then they try to basically get the same timing and the same, you know, the same message across that whatever was being spoken in English. It's a, it's a horrible painstaking process because it's, you know, you're, They'll, you know, every language and how you say something is different in terms of timing and how long it takes to say the same thing. Mm. So with this, they actually have some sort of visual reference. Like they can watch a video of an actor and then they just try to, it's like dubbing. You're just kind of yeah, matching yeah. what he did. And what it allows you to do now for the game development side is you can have animation created for English. But that animation now will work in any language because oh the audio God. is going to be in sync no matter what language you put it in. So Yo. it's, you know, for us, I mean, we've been doing this for, I've been at the company seven years. We've been going at it for 15 years. Wow. You know, it's the first time we, you know, and they approached us with this idea, right? And, it, and wow. it, it's, it's awesome. So I, I, you know, we're day one, right? We just had the press release go out today. Yeah. So, but it, it's showing like what's possible and it doesn't, 
you know, the big thing with technology is you can't change and reinvent the wheel, right? Yeah. People don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to risk everything. They don't want to, you know, some games, they have a, you know, like an NBA franchise, they have to release in October every yeah. year. Yeah, it's a yearly you know? thing, so it's a different process. Got you, got yeah. you. Yeah, you know, they can't take on too much, right, to change what they do. Um, so this process is, a, you know, is something that doesn't change a lot. But it increases quality, so it's like a win across the board. Yes. Right? And then, you know, the developers aren't having to pay a ton more money, and they're getting better quality. Like everybody's happy, so we're oh, we're pretty no. jazzed about it. Yo, that is insane. I love the way you explained it. Now to my next question, and you already mentioned NBA. Now I'm gonna tell you something, man. NBA 2K14. Oh my I saw God! Your review, man. I saw your review. Oh, you saw a review? Yo, dude! I, oh my! Like in my soul. Especially on the TV that I got, it's like yo, put like this. I, yo, Pete, I kid you not. When I'm playing this game, sometimes I don't even play it. I just let the computer play while I'm doing something else, and then watch it like I'm watching TV. It looks oh, it's bad, insane, man. It looks so good. So here's so here's my thing for you. Now NBA 2K, it looks amazing. Now how much further can the next gen systems push the fidelity in those graphics, and will we see WWE? 2K benefit even more so since more of the human body is exposed with this face yeah, technology. This they are at the tip of the iceberg of what is possible. If, that, if, if you can if you can understand that, it's insane. You lying you know, to me. You the serious? amount of work that they're doing right now for the next one, it's it's on another level. It's really. Hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. It gave me hype. Wait, hold on, hold on. So you wait, just, wait, wait. So you tell him? Uh, can you confirm that NBA 2K15? Looks a little bit better or a lot better than 2K14, and you're from what you've seen or whatever. We um, so we don't have exposure to the direct uh, to the developer themselves. It's being done up in San Francisco, a okay. studio called Visual Concepts. Yeah. Um, but the amount of work they're doing right now using our software, yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's gonna be big good. It's oh my good. god! I, I don't believe it, yo. Also, I'm very excited about that. Now, um. Now my next question is this: uh, just to um, oh, just to finish up the first question with the WWE 2K and that type of technology. Now your company is called Facewear, but you know there's a whole lot of mus muscles that you see and a lot of flexing and a lot of you know sweat that you see in wrestling games. You know what I'm saying? Um, what can we expect from WWE 2K with the new technology that 2K is working on over at Visual Concepts? And because I, I would love to see what that technology can be like in a wrestling environment. Yeah, they, um, you know, they, they obviously have a good team uh, working on up there, and they've only had WWE for a handful of months, right? Yes. Yeah. Since, since they got uh, awarded from THQ. Um, you should be excited on where they're going because they can adopt a lot of the other things they're doing on the NBA side into that. You know, we, mm. we are just a software provider, right? We're on the outside of all that, we're, yeah. we're specific to faces. But knowing kind of how their development cycles work, the access to the team they have up there, the talent they have there, yeah, um, you should be excited because again, it's the tip of the iceberg, you know, oh and they're a machine God. up there. I mean, the, the way they produce games and the cycles and the, the challenges they have every year, you know, every year Kobe needs to still look like Kobe. Yes, that, and, that's true. And every, you know, and every year it comes out, he's, you know, it's it's. It's incrementally better, right? And yeah. I don't know if you've seen some of those those videos online where they go back to like '98 and yes. they, they take through, you know, and you see clear improvements each year. And the same thing you can you'll be able to see in WWE, right? Wow. And they'll be able to improve that every year um, because that's just how their team's built and what they're supposed to do. Okay, amazing. Now my next question is this: Do you think EA will use your technology for the future of Madden, or will 2K Sports? Uh, or will 2K Sports use your technology for their next NFL 2K game that they do? I so I can't that. speak too much on the, on the 2K side of things. We have a, a master agreement with Take Two Interactive, which includes all of Rockstar's games and 2K's games. Oh, okay, okay. So they they, they are using it um, on the EA side. I mean, they're pretty big. Obviously, Madden's done down at Tiburon Studios down in Florida. Yeah. Um, we're working with EA Studio up in Vancouver, who does a lot of their other span, uh, uh, that's, franchises. That's the UFC uh, game, right? That you're doing, right? The which game? The the UFC game. Is that your technology? That is not our technology. Oh, I'm about to say because I cool because that because that's the closest thing that I've seen to like 
looking like real like how the 2k like how the NBA 2k 14 looks so when I saw that I was about to say if you did like you guys are just killing the industry right now it's crazy yeah so we're um so NBA is really uh, is our best for the sports franchise I mean, okay. we've been on that for five years um but the capture lab guys who's EA Vancouver that's where uh FIFA is done all okay. up there um a lot of their other kind of sports franchises are done up there but not Madden so Oh, okay. I was just about to say, because after seeing what you guys done, Madden could use what the yeah. hell you guys Did you see doing. The, uh, the trailer that came out yesterday? Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Like, I seen the trailer and how it went from human to game. But even looking at that little game joint, it looked good, but NBA 2K14 still looks better, yeah, yeah. from my yeah. opinion. And, yeah. that, that's, and that's why I said, I know you can't speak on it, but I really believe that NFL, like the NFL 2K, like 2K sports game, um, I, I mean, I heard a lot of rumors that it's coming back and everything, but if it does come back or whatever, they need to use your technology, man, for an NFL game. Like, for okay. real. So the big thing, like, keep an eye on what developer would be creating whatever game. Because okay. the developer that's creating it is going to use the tools that they already have. Right, so if you have the visual concepts guys up in San Francisco, and say they get awarded that franchise, they're naturally going to use all the tools and everything that they already have for all the other titles. Oh, they do. I see what you're saying. Okay, I understand how it works. So okay, cool. That, that in, in terms of you know how our software gets used, of course, I'd love to be on Madden. You know, that's been on our radar for a long time. But you know, that team specifically has their own tools. They've been building Madden for 25, 30 years. You know, yeah. like it's been going on a long time. So to for them to integrate you know, new technology like ours, you know, it's a big request because they're like NBA. They have to do, meet a release schedule every year. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Now, what is some of your favorite games to play? You know what I'm saying? We, we, we about to get into the mind and the heart of Pete and his true gamer side, all right? What's some of your yeah. favorite games to play just overall? I've always man? been an NCAA fan. On the really? Side. Yeah. Wow. It's, just, it's okay. so different than Madden. I, I just it is it's better than Madden, actually. It's better yeah, than Madden. But it's a, it's a completely different game, and I think they do a yeah. good job respecting the you know the, the integrity of the sport, right? Yes. College football is different than football. And yeah. the games are very structured that way. You, you know, there's the strategy of it, the way you know you can make mistakes, live and die with the option, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and Red Dead Redemption. That was... I'm, oh, Red right Dead. Yo, I'm, I'm yeah. going to give you a hug right now, man. Oh, man. Yo, Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, oh, that was a good crazy. one. That's I, I enjoy GTA Five. I mean, how can you not? Yeah, like Red, Dead Red Dead Redemption. Just the style of it. Like, I mean, are we going to get another Red Dead Redemption? I was recently at Rockstar Games, man. I did a live stream playing Grand Theft Auto Five with my friend uh, Freddie Gibbs, uh, the rap artist. And um, even though I had to bust his ass because I'm nice, like you know, that's what I do. But um, the thing is, uh, Red Dead, I, I mentioned it to them, and they just smile at me like you're smiling. They they don't want to say nothing, man. I be trying to get it out you of them, man. Say, you can't say anything, but I mean, you you look at the trends. They they create these franchises and they do big releases. And the one thing about Rockstar, you know, they're gonna do it right. And every that's true. every new that's one true. that comes out, it's gonna take a while, like you know, maybe two three years. But when it comes out, they've done it right and they've they embraced. Uh, new technology, new gameplay, you know, the way things should be done. They set the bar. And there's a reason that every game they do is just ridiculous. That's true, man. That's right. Now, let me ask you this. Between PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, in your personal opinion and your, you know, development opinion and everything, your expertise, which system do you feel best can harness the power of what you guys are doing right now with the software that you created?